I've left this one a little bit late, but I wanted to bring it to you because August was a fantastic month for solar generation. In amongst my smart meter videos, which you can learn about in this video here, my August generation was the third best I've had this year, whereas last year August was only my fifth best month. And this was actually the first time I've beaten last year's figures by quite a decent margin when comparing this year with last year. Further helping my solar payback and confirming my decision to invest in solar and a home battery in the first place. Stay tuned for more. Hi everyone, I'm Danny V Solar. Welcome to my channel. Here you can follow my journey all things solar, home batteries, energy tariffs and much more. Be sure to like this video if you find it useful and also subscribe to my channel to follow my journey. In this video I'll be bringing you the solar statistics for the month of August and this is still one of the best months for solar generation overall but definitely on the decline now as the winter months start to draw in. As a reminder of my system I have 16 395 watt solar panels, 6 on my east facing roof and 10 on my west facing roof. And this setup matches my usage patterns really nicely so I tend to use electricity early in the morning and then late at night. And overall the systems work brilliantly since I had it installed in December 2022. I've paired the solar panels with a 9.5 kilowatt hour give energy battery and a 5 kilowatt hybrid give energy inverter. I've then taken advantage of Octopus's smart tariffs and utilised the intelligent Octopus Go tariff where I can buy electricity for just seven pence per kilowatt hour overnight and charge my car and my home battery and that's given me negative bills all summer and if you would like to join Octopus for their smart tariffs or just their overall great customer service then it'd be great if you could use the link that's on screen now if you sign up to Octopus you get £50 added to your account when you join and I also get £50 as well which helps to support the channel thank you to everyone that's used this so far let's dive into the figures and I wanted to start with this graph just to show how good August's generation was in comparison to the rest of the year. As you can see, in July we basically had the same generation as 2023, but August has absolutely smashed last year's figure, ending up 16% more overall, 549 kilowatt hours last year versus 637 kilowatt hours this year. So it's 88 kilowatt hour increase over last year and quite close to July's figure as well. The next chart again shows what a good month August was with the lowest generation day, the average daily generation and the high generation for the month all up on last year's figures. September is certainly looking to be a disappointment in comparison to these figures. If we look closer at the generation for the month you can see that once again I was exporting the vast majority of my solar generation back to the grid and that's taken advantage of the 7 pence per kilowatt hour import overnight and then exporting my energy back to the grid for 15 pence per kilowatt hour during the day as a solar generator power. The best day for generation was the 11th of August where I generated a grand total of 31.95 kilowatt hours. As mentioned earlier and as you can see not a bad solar curve for the day but also still some room for improvement with some intermittent cloud cover throughout the day which you can see in these little dips that are in the chart throughout the day. Maximum generation was around 4 kilowatts at about 2 p.m. The worst day for generation in the month of August was on the 4th and just 10.89 kilowatt hours generated, which to be honest is not too bad for the worst day of the month, but a very different looking graph to the best day. A slight spike around 4 p.m. where the sun must have briefly made an appearance resulting in a maximum of 3 kilowatts generation at that time. You can see now the solar day started at around 6am and ended just after 8pm so the shorter days are definitely upon us now. Grid import is slightly higher this month and I think I found the cause for this. So in July I started exporting the battery at about 9.30pm to avoid the state of charge issue that I saw earlier in the month as the battery was not getting low enough to calibrate the charge of the battery correctly. However, a side effect of doing this is that Give Energy's Eco mode is then switched off, which means during the day, if there's not enough solar power to support the home energy, it pulls that extra from the grid instead of the battery, which results in slightly higher usage. I spoke to some other YouTubers about this and Speak to the Geek and Tim and Kat's Greenwalk mentioned about there being two different options for export. One of these is timed export, which is what I was using, and another is timed discharge. My options on my Gen 1 inverter don't allow for the time discharge, which I think would do exactly what I'm looking for, which from what I understand sets the export at a certain time of the day. 
but then switches the eco mode back on for the rest of the day. We've also seen inconsistent behavior between the generation of the inverter and potentially the firmware that it's using. Give Energy, if you're watching this, it would be good if you could get this behavior consistent across all models and allow both eco and timed export or timed discharge to work together in harmony. As the generation fades, as we go into winter, this would become more and more of an issue as it would be drawing more from the grid. So I've reverted back to eco mode now as of the 25th of September. And hopefully as the battery gets discharged more during the day, we don't see the state of charge issue anymore. Home consumption, and this is excluding my electric vehicle, is again pretty comparable to previous months at 150 kilowatt hours ish. Generally ranging from 3.5 kilowatt hours to 7.5 kilowatt hours usage for the days. Not too much more to see on this graph really. And if we move on to look at my electric vehicle consumption, this month is a little bit tricky to measure. As I mentioned in my previous video, my smart meter is totally broken at the moment. To coincide with that, the past few months, my Zappies had connectivity issues with my Wi-Fi. This now appears to be resolved, but my smart meter stopped working on the 16th of August, and I only fixed the Zappy on the 13th of August. So there is a little bit of guesstimate work with these figures, but what I've tried to do is combine the import figures from the Zappy from the 16th of August onwards, and then reduce the home consumption to give us what we used to calculate the usage on the EV which this month equated to 199 kilowatt hours of home charging. So quite low, however, we were on holiday at the end of August, which did have an effect on the usage, but you can still see that downward trend on EV usage over the summer because of the battery operating more efficiently. An absolutely fantastic month in terms of solar export. So with the good weather and the fact that I was exporting some energy back to the grid from 9 p.m. until 11.30 p.m., to prevent that state of charge issue, we had a grand total of 721 kilowatt hours. And remember, whatever time of the day I export that back, I'm getting paid 15 pence per kilowatt hour for that. And if we move on to look at the payback, as you can see, the consumption was 149.44 kilowatt hours for the month of August, and the import equated to 244 kilowatt hours. That's my home consumption in parts and also charging my battery overnight. And that equated to 18 pounds and 50 pence for the month. Generation from the solar panels was 637 kilowatt hours and the export back to the grid was 712 for the month. And that equated to 106 pounds and 82 pence in earnings. So if we compare that to, I always got, try and compare this to the flexible standard tariff that would have cost me 31 pounds and 80 pence without solar. But with solar, this actually cost me minus 88 pounds and 33 pence. So the overall saving for the month is very comparable to last month at around 120 pound. And if we add that to the cumulative savings now, we're over 2000 pounds in terms of cumulative savings. And that takes the remaining payback to about 8,800 pounds. And if we look at electric vehicle usage, as I mentioned, 199 kilowatt hours for the month of August. And that equated to just 15 pound and eight pence to charge my car. The cost of diesel per litre on my old car, this is what I always try and compare it to to see what I'm saving versus my old BMW 3 Series was around £1.46 for the month of August and that would have cost £153.30 for the miles that I'd done. And that gives us fuel savings of around about £138 for the month. If we add that together with the overall savings, that's £258. And while the EV savings can't be attributed to the solar directly, I always like to include this and if we give the, both of those together that equates to a cumulative saving of over £4,000 now which is fantastic. And last but by no means least if we look at my bills for August so we haven't had these through officially yet because my smart meter issues have prevented that from coming through however standing charge equates to £21.39 for electricity which is a lot now so I'm paying about 70 pence per day just to get electricity supplied to my house before I've even used any as of October the 1st. The charge for electricity is £33.58 and my export for the month is £106.82 in earnings. Gas is for the standing charge is £8.53 and usage still relatively low. We've had the heating on in September a couple of times but just £2.67 for August. And that gives us a total bill 
And remember, this is to heat my home, power my home, power my EV, heat the hot water in the house. And that equated to minus £40.65 for the month of August. So again, a negative month, Octopus paying me for the power that I'm sending back to the grid and a reduction in my bills from having solar. So absolutely fantastic. Really, really happy with that. Let me know in the comments how your generation got on this month if you have solar and a home battery. Uh, if you don't, then let me know in the comments if you're debating it and let me know if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to answer them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.